I'm really concerned with uh, Syria, this, this war escalation in Syria, but I'm almost more concerned with my perspective on this situation because I'm, I'm like wondering, okay, if you don't know the situation, basically, you know, uh, Assad is the, the Syrian president, I think he is. And he's been basically staving a, a, a revolution, trying to stop it from happening. I mean, you know, God knows who all these different organizations are up in arms, literally have weapons and are on a, on a route to overthrow the government. And all these other countries are involved. It's pretty much the focal point of the military of the world right now, as far as I know. At least that's what the U.S. media seems to be pouring down my throat. And I'm not even watching the U.S. media much. I'm still like getting second wind of it. So basically, they're using Obama and like whoever else is using chemical weapons. Like if Assad uses chemical weapons on his people, then that means we have to military intervene. And what I'm saying is, what they can drop explosive incendiary bombs on tens, hundreds of thousands of people, 10,000 people, 1,000 people, that's fine. But if they go gas a, a market square of 40 people, that that's a cause for fucking full-scale war? It doesn't make any sense. It's bullshit. It's like a manipulative... They just look... It's, you know, it's a reason that they're... And it's the same thing George Bush did to get us into war with Iraq. Uh, this use of weapons of mass destruction versus... You know, and a bomb is a weapon of mass destruction. It can kill 40 people in a split second. That's mass destruction. The, what I'm what I'm concerned with is part of me is wondering is it okay like okay the US police use pepper spray that's a chemical weapon people are okay with it they use tear gas that's a chemical weapon it's not necessarily lethal so chemical weapons are dude a bullet is a chemical weapon it's made of iron. So, Jesus. You fucking moronic sheep. <laughs> I don't want to get pissed at you. But open up your mind. Realize what's going on. These bankers, the people that are running the dollar show with all these banks they have all over the world. The Bank of England, the Federal Reserve, the Bank of Australia, the Bank of International Settlements, which binds these banks they want to start a bank in syria and so they're guiding policy towards an invasion so that, that we can prop up a bank there now my question is and this is what really gets me down this is why i even made this video to begin with i'm concerned with this belief that maybe that's a good thing maybe we should be supporting a military invasion of the world country by country and an installation of a bank country by country until we're all democratized in the sense that everyone speaks English there's a McDonald's on every corner fucking Monsanto GMOs are everywhere everyone's fed and then we can figure out how to make GMOs not toxic and maybe a corporate future is the most peaceful future but necessarily peace doesn't necessarily mean prosperity you know slaves can live in a sort of peace um, if we're not slaves, are we bound to re revolt? Is that the dichotomy? Either we're in a state of revolution or we're in a state of slavery? Like, what is peace? Is peace plotting for the next war? Cultural revolution is great, but then... After that happens, are you just plotting for the next cultural revolution? Is it always like the next person wants to take control? It like it feels like. 
to try and stop this invasion of Syria, which I don't know if we're going to be firing cruise missiles or what it's going to be. There's a hundred. We have a hundred troops in Syria right now, as far as I know, that's been there for like a month or two months. It's like swimming upstream. What's upstream? Why do we want to get upstream so much? Just so we can go downstream again? Like, why would I? Why would I spend the next twenty years of my life preventing a war against Syria when a hundred million people want a war against Syria? Like, how how can you? I, I don't think trying to stop people is necessarily the way to go. But then it's like if I condone dropping bombs on someone, isn't that condoning them to drop bombs on me? I'm, I'm all sorts of fucked up about it. I'm not looking for revolutionaries. I'm not looking for people that are anti-war, that are pro-peace, that are developing a system that makes it so that we don't have to go to war. But we don't have to go to war. We never had to go to war. We just chose to go to war because we were afraid of each other. And rather than wait to see if the other person's going to be peaceful and then find out the hard way, you know, I, I've been hungry. I, I was on the street for a while living out of a car and washing my hands with rainwater because that was the only water I had access to or the closest source of water and like hungry. And when you get hungry, you get desperate. And I would I was walking down the street and I saw a bike and I wanted to steal it. I had the impulse to steal it and sell it or something. And I realized I, I in my life I've never wanted to steal something to sell it. But I was so poor at that time that it was the first impulse I had was to take it. And I, I can imagine that desperation was extrapolated that what what would happen. And these people are, are trying to stop themselves from committing crime when it, their entire impulse is like, take it, you need it to survive. It's difficult to fucking get into the mindset of someone in a fucking third world country or, or country where they're lucky if they have electricity six hours a day. When that's not my reality. So I have to do what I can from my perspective while still understanding that perspective. is like talky, talky, talky. I don't know Arabic. Well, it's like what do we do versus what am I thinking? And this is not the place to fucking figure out what I'm thinking. If I don't know what I'm thinking, that's a problem. Maybe I'll watch this video and then realize what I was thinking. What do you think about war? See, okay, these global banks, they don't have one in Cuba, and they don't have one in Syria, and they don't have one in Iran, and they don't have one in North Korea. But they want banks. I don't know who it is. Uh, Rothschild. Jacob Rothschild. I think he's one of those guys. And that's the thing. Once we start dropping names, like, what do we do? Go after them? Freak them out? Build a better currency system? A free energy system? Where you can print your own food? It's funny because we, we stress and we stress about resources and about getting everyone in the world enough resources and when it comes down to it I think there's gonna be a shift and everyone's gonna have resources so you know the last 20 years of worrying is like didn't have to happen but then again maybe it did have to happen because great solutions have come out of that I've played a lot of Civilization 5. 
and in Civilization V, it's absolutely amazing game. If you like games and you like simulation games, especially if you like turn-based simulation games, Civilization V now is multiplayer. You can play with your friends or your enemies. There's a multitude of ways to win the game of Civilization. You can win by force through military victory and dominance. And I think just playing a video game where I want to conquer the world through force makes me think that maybe it's okay to conquer the earth with a military force. But right now, if the Russian military wanted to conquer the earth, I would not be happy with that. In my lifetime, that would suck because I don't know Russian. I'm not, I don't know Russian culture really. And I would have to convert and learn Russian to get by in that culture. So that must be terrifying to a country that's not an English speaking Christian country. The prospect that they're going to be overrun by, by an advanced military. You can also win diplomatically and manipulate the shit out of countries around the world by their vote. Maybe that's what's happening. It's like a, it's like a amalgamation. They're they're conquering land and then they're buying the vote of the conquered land. I mean, they basically own the, I mean, Iraq right now is a U.S. puppet state. And it seems like Afghanistan is the same. Afghanistan and Iraq, these two sovereign nations, Iraq is like, Baghdad is like one of the oldest cities in the world. Iraq is one of the oldest civilizations in the world. The Iraqi people, the Persians, is a U.S. puppet state. Would you be comfortable being a U.S. puppet state? You know, we like to say states have rights. States trump the feds. I, I, I see the ideal. The ideal that we self-govern, that we don't kowtow to some invisible force dictating rules. But to get there is impractical with the current technology. If we had fucking free energy flow and we didn't need to transport goods, but then where's your communication? How do you make sure that your neighbor, if your neighbor invades you with you know, a bunch of rifles down the street, who do I have to protect me if not a greater invisible force that I can call on the phone? Man, there is no easy solution. and There never has been. But there was not a military industrial complex from 1780 to 1890. We had about 100 years of, of freedom and peace where we, the U.S., I say we, but these people had an industrial revolution of a renaissance, a technical renaissance. And we can do that again with 3D printing and, you know, preachy, preachy, preachy God. You know, and I haven't been making many videos, but if I have, you know how many fucking times I would have said 3D printing if I was making a video a day for the last year? It's, it's the most exciting technology I've ever seen in my life. And, and that's like deep in my core. The internet actually, I guess I, the internet is probably the most exciting technology I've ever seen in my life. So maybe this is why it comes back to taking care of yourself and your physical body because I want to be having this conversation 40 years with you. And if you're not here because your body got sick and you died, that's a problem. So you have to keep yourself alive.
And in this program where there are no easy solutions, and though it seems drastic that it's not going to end tomorrow, it's going to continue, and it's going to keep continuing. At the same time, firing cruise missiles into a, a country that I've never been to, I'm not really happy with that. I can't do it alone. And I'm, though I'm not alone right now, I, I'm not connecting with you like I should be. I don't even know who you are. You're a camera, a Logitech camera. I'm not like talking to you. But it's just an illusion anyway, right? So maybe I am talking to you.